Hi everyone, and welcome to our last critical thinking video. It's been so great teaching you all critical thinking. Today's video will be a recap of our last couple videos that we had. So we're going to just touch on everything that we talked about, majority of the things that we talked about, our major points that we talked about in all of our previous videos. So first we're going to start about, we're going to start with why is critical thinking important? I hope you all remembered why critical thinking was important and is important. But if you don't, I'm going to help you remember why critical thinking is important. Critical thinking is important because in order for us to express ourselves, we need to know how to think clearly and critical thinking helps us with that. Critical thinking also shows us how to solve problems and break down text when we're reading. So if you remember in our previous videos, we I talked about how critical thinking, how we use it in our everyday life when it comes to reading, writing, and even when we're communicating with each other, with our friends, our family, things like that. How does it relate to everyday life? Well, we just discussed one way how it relates to our everyday life. Another way, well, how does it relate to everyday life? Critical thinking is used in everyday life in many ways. Critical thinking is just a simple thought process. So remember, critical thinking, it's basically just a thought process, just our thought process. The way we use critical thinking in everyday life is when we have a problem, we use critical thinking when we stop and think about ways to solve the problem. So we have a problem in our everyday life, which that comes up very often. It may not be a problem that's serious. It can just be a basic school problem, a basic like question in school. Critical thinking is what you use and that comes in handy to help you solve that problem. Also, when reading a book and we don't understand what the author is trying to say to us, critical thinking, it helps us solve, it helps us make sense of the story. Sorry. So when you're reading a story in school for language arts or anything like that, or just any book for any class, and you get stumped or you get stuck with, what is what does this really mean? Critical thinking is what kicks in and sits there and helps you understand better understand what the writer or the author is trying to say in that text okay we also discuss what critical thinking is critical thinking it goes beyond memory helping it goes beyond memory helping students connect the dot it helps students connect the dots between concepts solving problems thinking critically, and applying knowledge. So, critical thinking, it basically helps us do everything. Without critical thinking, we would be stuck on a lot of things. We would be stuck when it comes to talking because we wouldn't be able to comprehend what a person is saying. We wouldn't know what to say. So, critical thinking is honestly a big major part, not just in school, but in everyday life. All right. Next, we did discuss four ways to teach critical thinking. Ask questions, decision making, work in groups, and POV, which is point of view. So we're going to break each one down again like we did previously. We're going to just vaguely talk about each one again. So ask questions. Asking questions will help us build our knowledge and better understand so when a teacher in school tells you to ask a question don't be afraid to ask the question I know you all heard in school the question that you may have may be the same question someone else is afraid to ask never be afraid to ask this question in school that's what I that's the main thing I want you to take from ask questions Never be afraid to ask a question, even if it's not in school. If you have a question to anyone about anything that they're like, if someone's saying something to you and you're like, I don't understand what you mean by that. Can you explain that to me better? Don't be afraid to ask a question because asking questions, it gives you knowledge and it better helps you understand. 
Next is decision making. We got to make the right decision. Okay. And decision making, it helps us you it helps us use our knowledge to learn about different situations and weigh the pros and cons. So decision making is what pro and cons are all about. You always want you want to make the right decision, not the wrong decision. The right decision or the good decision will be your pros. The bad decision or the wrong decision will be your cons. So when you're writing a book or reading or even making a decision, you weigh your pros and cons. You sit there and think, all right, what's the good side of this? And what's the bad side of this? The good side would be your pros, right? And the bad side would be your cons. So you always want to weigh your options. I mean, you want to weigh your decision making helps you weigh your options. Sorry. Working in group. You want to work in groups. Working in groups is good because it expresses, it exposes us to expand our thought process with others. If we never work in groups and never work with other people, we never learn what other people have to say. We never get another person's perspective of a situation or a thought. Working with others helps us and is better for us as a person and as a critical thinker. Okay? So working with others... It's a great way of critical thinking. You can't always work in groups or everything, but when you get a chance to work in a group, it's great for critical thinking and it's great to help us with critical thinking. POV, which is point of view. Okay, so there's two point of views. There's your point of view and, there are these, and there's everyone else's point of view. Your point of view can be totally different from someone else's point of view. But it's always great to understand what the other person is saying from their point of view. Point of view helps us see things from others' perspectives. And that's what I was just explaining. So if, you always have, if you're always one-sided, which means you hear only your opinion and you don't care about what anyone else, is, what anyone else says, that's bad. That's a bad critical thinker. A great, a great critical thinker always listens to everyone else's point of view. Okay? Next, we discuss the fundamentals of thinking, of critical thinking from author's point of view. So we discussed writing a book and we talked about the author's point of view. So we're going to just gent just lightly recap on what we talked about about the fundamentals of critical thinking from the author's point of view. There's clarity, accuracy, relevance, precision, and depth. Those were, the, those were the five things we discussed. Do you remember those? Okay, well, if you don't, I'm going to help you remember, and I'm going to tell you right now, very briefly. Clarity. Does your book, does your work make sense? Will the reader have a clear understanding? Remember, when you're writing a book or even writing a paper, you want to make sure the reader understands what you're talking about. You want to make sure you don't go off on a tangent. And you want to make sure your whole paper or book all connects to one main topic. Next is accuracy. Critical thinkers seek accurate information in order to get closer to the truth. You want to make sure when you're writing a book or when you're writing a story, or writing anything, that everything is true. You as a critical thinker and as an author or authors in general, they seek accuracy. So they go out and research about what they're going to write. So they make sure they have the truth for us, the readers or you, the reader. So you know that everything you're reading is the truth. We don't want to be reading false information and then we go to write an article or write a story and we're giving our next reader false information. So accuracy is a main is a main thing for a critical thinker and for an author. Relevance. We discuss relevance when talking about clarity. Relevance, you want to make sure everything in your story or your article is making sense and goes with the topic. You don't want to be writing a story or article about pigs. I don't know why I picked that animal, but about pigs. And then you start talking about elephants. We weren't writing about elephants. We were writing about pigs. Okay? So relevance means the information being put into the story or book 
will have meaning to issue to the issue being discussed. So make sure everything being discussed goes with the issue. Precision. Working hard at an issue before readers mind is in a different way. So with precision, you want to make sure you get your point across in little time before the reader's mind goes off somewhere else. When reading a book, you don't want to sit there and be reading about the same thing for way too long and not getting any information on it. You want to get information to the reader as quick as possible in little time, but with a lot of information. Okay? So now our last one is depth. How deep did you go? That may seem like a weird question. It was a weird question when we first discussed it. With depth, that means did you dig into your topic or your issue deep enough? Did you give your reader enough information to understand what you are trying to say? So that, in the simplest way, that's what depth is. In the simplest form to, dis to explain that. We also talked about the five W's and the one H. Our five W's were the who, what, when, where, and why. And the one H is the how. Who is it about? What happened? When did it, when did it take place? Or when did it happen? Where did it take place? Why did it happen? And how did it happen? Those are main things that you have to remember when writing a story or an article, a book, or anything like that. The five W's and the one H. So in, in total, there's six. Lastly, we are going to discuss the 12 steps to write a book. This was the last thing we discussed in last week's video, in our last critical thinking video that we, um, that we had. We discussed the 12 steps to writing a book. So the 12 steps are find your best idea, Develop your main character. Write the right length. R-I-G-H-T length. Start the story quickly. Figure out the main problem. Use repetition. Write, the, write for illustrators. End the story quickly. Choose your title. A revision strategy, which is walk the plank. How to find an editor. And how to find an illustrator. So now I'm going to quickly go over these 12 things just to brief up what these 12 things are. Find your best idea. You want to find out if the idea that you're using has been used and how you can make your book or your story different from others. You don't want to just sit there and have your book be similar to everyone else's that is out there. Okay, so that's the simple. That's the easiest way to put it. Find your best idea. Make sure no one else has what you're going to put in your book. And if they do, how can you make your book better? How can you make that information seem more interesting to a reader than the last person? Develop your main character. You want to develop your main character right in the start and right before you start writing your book so that when you're writing it, the main character doesn't get lost with all the other characters. And you want to make sure your main character feels real. Write the right length. Write the R-I-G-H-T length, okay? So for certain age groups, we did discuss that there's a certain amount of words. For zero to one, for zero to three, there should be zero to 200 words. And for seven, ages seven to 12, there should be 10,000 to 30,000 words. And that's considered a chapter book. So I'm not gonna tell you all the ages. We did discuss that in the last video. Start the story quickly. That's very self-explanatory. Start the story quickly. You want to introduce your main, you introduce your characters and your main character and grab your child, grab the reader's attention at the start of your story. And if you remember in last week's video, we said that should happen between pages one to three. Page one is the best, page three, it's okay, but that's kind of pushing it. So it's better to start at page one and two. Number five is figure out the main problem. Every character has a problem. It can be a mystery. It can be a problem with another character. But every character, well, 
every character will have a problem, but if you don't want your character to have a problem, there could be a different type of problem that comes up within your story, your book, or your writing. Next is use repetition. Repetition means repeating. Repeating is great, especially for children's book. Repeating things helps the child like the book better, and then they're like, it prepares them. Oh, this is gonna come up next. I know the author. I know the author is gonna say this next. Parents love repetition. Kids love repetition. The readers will love repetition. We all love repetition. So remember, repetition is great. Number seven is write for illustrators, and what that means is make the make drawing pictures fun. The illustrators are the people that draw pictures for books. You don't want to sit there instead of using a dog, use a snake or a rep or a different type of reptile. Make the illustrator's job fun. End the story quickly. This is also self-explanatory. This is just like start the story quickly. If you can sit there and write your book in 500 words, don't try to use 700 words. If you got your point across in 500 words, don't try to just stretch out to 700 words just to make your book longer. You want to end your story quickly. The reader, the reader will love it and the reader will appreciate you for ending it faster and ending, ending your book quickly. Number nine is choose your title. You don't want to choose your title before you start writing your book because you may end up changing it. So the best, your best bet to do is start writing your book and then pick your title at the end after you finish writing your book. And trust me, your title will come to you so much more easily. It may come to you right in the middle of writing your book, but still try to wait till the end. Number 10, a revision strategy, which is walk the plank. Reread your book word for word and ask yourself, if I take this word out, will this sentence still make sense? If I take this word out, will this sentence still make sense? And if the sentence still makes sense after taking a word out, take the word out. It makes your sentence smaller, well, shorter, and it'll make your book shorter, and you're getting to your point faster. Number 11, how to find an editor. Development, there's two types of editors, if you remember from last week, developmental editors and copy editors. Developmental editors help improve your story, and copy editors fix grammar mistakes. That's all you need to know for that part. Lastly is how to find an illustrator. Illustrators are the people that draw the pictures for your book. Most important step in the post writing process. This is the most important step. They're making your book fun. They're drawing the pictures, the color, they're doing the colors and everything. So depending on their experience, if it's under one month or two months, up to 12 months or more, they're going to cost more money. And you guys should probably remember that from last week. Now that is the end of today's video. Thank you for watching all the critical thinking videos with me, Mr. G. And I hope you have learned something and taken something away from all these critical thinking videos. Remember, we use critical thinking every day. Can you tell me another way that you use critical thinking? Great. Continue to be a great critical thinker and continue to use critical thinking in your everyday life. See you guys next time.